everybody, it's the Modern Geek, also known as Vamp Mario, and we are back with another Peyton video. We are two minutes of late, which is a huge improvement for me. Um, it is AOS painting night. Uh, we are back live, uh, and we're going to do some more stuff tonight. Um, so, I, I, I labeled this video, Mistakes Were Made. Um, as you guys well know, I have plenty of models to paint. Uh, as you see every week when we are painting. Um, but I've been watching a lot of battle reports with the newer rules for AOS. Uh, this year's, you know, general uh, general uh, revisions and with the new book um, that uh, adjusts everybody and uh, certain armies or factions are starting to get new books. Um so I've been wanting the Sylvan F for a really long time. Uh, I've always loved their aesthetic. I'm always an elf guy. I always loved the wood elves and the old fantasy elves. Um, so I just loved the sort of druidish, uh, you know, wood elf cross pollination thing. Um, so I've wanted these models for a while. Actually, I've wanted these models ever since AOS like came into fruition. So uh, I showed it off another time that we were going to start to do these. Um, I wanted to get them done before today, but um, I don't know. I thought it'd be kind of cool to do some building. I don't usually do a lot of building, but I got the uh, I got the Vanguard box, which comes with quite a good sampling of stuff for the Sylvaneth. Um, you get, um, two special, two units and the tree Lord ancient it's 10 models. Uh, it's one, it retails for one thirty. Um, and then I also got one of the characters, which is the long war song bet, uh, revenant, which is a pretty amazingly cool model. Very detailed, very cool. And he retails for $55. So we will start to add these into the rotation uh, of factions I want to paint. So uh, definitely, you guys want to come and watch us uh, delve into that. Um, other mistakes that have been made. Well, actually, some of these are older mistakes. But I also have um, a harvester for the Asiago Bone Reapers, which I would love to start painting some of them. These models are insane. Um, they're sort of like AOS Tomb Kings. They sort of have that Tomb King aesthetic, uh, but they also have that. Um, this Vanguard box is pretty cool. Um, yeah, so if you look, now what I'm curious about is I'm assuming the Tree Lord... Um, the Tree Lord, I'm assuming that model has the same variations that the other model had, where you could turn it into the specific Tree Lord Ancient, Ancient, or um, so either the generic one or the character based one. And as always, guys, my nose is clogged. It always happens the minute I go live. It's hilarious and frustrating. All at the same time. Oh man, I had a, I had tissues here for this reason, but they always seem to find their way somewhere else. So I'm going to have to walk away from the camera, which I hate doing that, to uh, track it down. There we go. Okay. Oh man. Um. So I thought maybe it'd be kind of fun to build the Tree Lord Ancient, but uh, we'll see. shotgun now okay um i also have of course our nurgles that we can paint as well so the nurgles will be more the painting side of things and i figured we'd op uh, pop open this uh sylvaneth box and we can start looking at some of the screws and see what's in one of these now the vanguard sets are pretty good um i 100 slept on the for the uh, holiday forces that they did which were such better boxes and you got such a better value from them. Um, and I really should have bought those, but my store ran out of them. 
as I've talked about a lot with GW stuff, my store always is a little uh, a little behind because they're not getting all of their shipments of stuff. Um, so the Vanguard sets are good, but there's always the um, there's always the part of me that's like, do you get enough to actually play a full force game? Um, And I don't know if that's always true. Yeah, there we go. So that's what I was saying before. Spirit of Duthu. Tree Lord Ancient. And then a Tree Lord. So. Depending on what model you want to build. It has a variety of models in the box. Um. We're probably not going to build any today because I don't think you guys really want to see us build. I, th I know you guys like to see us paint. So, um, but I was curious to open up the box. Just a little kind of quick review of it. Um, but yeah, you can see the variety. Now, I don't know if I'm going to kit bash this, but you can see Spirit of Durthu, which is the named character has a very different look than the other characters do. Um, and then we get the the hunter unit. Um, and then the one that's really cool is we get the um, tree revenants. Oh, which I guess you could build Oh, Spite Revenants. I didn't even know that you had a variety. So I will say one thing that's kind of cool about this Vanguard box is there's a lot of variety of models you could build. So this is one of those few Vanguard boxes that's actually really good to buy two of. So like I would totally buy a second one because between the two of them, you could build a giant force of uh, Sylvan F and you'd have actually a lot of the model variations because literally every... Every model in here has a variation for another model. So it's a little tricky because you got to figure out your list before you start building. So we definitely won't build tonight because I got to look at lists before I can like do this. So, but a little, a little, uh, a little thing. Now this is your, this should be the mage character. So this is your like mage. Although the spirit of Duthu can uh, throw magic as well, but but if you look from a wound perspective, so what's interesting is they all have the same wound, um, which is kind of nice. The only thing is that Duthu, spirit of Duthu. A higher strength, um, but his weapons, his weapons are a little bit more, um, I think the spirit of, I mean, none of them have long range weapons. I don't believe, or maybe they do, but he also has magic. So they, they, they have a lot of stuff going on, but these are the basic war scrolls. So they're not going to tell you all the abilities. Uh, in the instruction manual, they stopped doing that. But I always, this, the Tree Lord models were always like just insanity to me. I loved how they looked. I loved how they, um, they just looked so badass. And the Sylvaneth, yeah, that's the Tree Lord Ancient. He's got like a, or Spirit of Duthu. He, he's got like a very robust, broken face. So, all right. Well, we've done a little bit of reviewing of that. Like I said, I will probably do this. I'll build this over time. Um, and we'll just get that going because uh, I don't want to do building on uh, stream. You guys always seem to not like it as much. Um, and I want to get to some painting because um, I know painting... Is what most people like everybody can build models it's not fun to watch someone build models i was building custom models or customizing a model 
that's a different story, like kit bashing, which I want to do more of that in the future. Um, but let's get back to our Nurgle, Nurgle painting, which we were uh, in the middle of doing. Uh, and we can kind of do those because Nurgle, Nurgle, Nurgle. But uh, my hope is next week to have some of that done so we can start painting up some of the Sylvaneth guys. So we have a little variety in the channel. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna put this to the side, our larger model, which we will get to. Uh, I'm gonna have to reglue that. That's crazy. That that just happened. Um, this is why I have to start putting some of these models away. All right, let's jump in. All right, so you guys can see where we had landed on this. Um, loving every minute of this. He looks nice and dirty. Um, we even started, I even started doing some pustules on the ground just to give it a little bit more flavor. All right. So oddly enough, I use the luminance. Uh, like it's a little bit more you know muddy dirty just to give the base some color and we can always come in i basing i i don't show a lot of basing on the channel i do eventually put like tufts and stuff or maybe like other effects on the bases um For Warhammer, I do keep it very basic. I don't know. I, I have a love-hate relationship with base bases because I always say that when you're doing a base, you want the base to not take away from your model. So I try to be very, like, specific and very, like... So all I'm doing now is just, like, a padding technique since I had already put some of that green there. And what this will do is it'll keep it organic. So it looks like that green just plopped down there. Now, what are you guys all working on out there? Don't be shy, say hi in the chat. I always say that you guys are the best part of the show. You make more commentary and fun than I ever could with my uh, long-winded talking. So yeah, let us know what you think. Let us know what's up. Uh, and this is, again, I'm using Gilliman. I like using Gilliman sometimes for ground or dirt. Um, as I say all the time, I sort of cycle through all the different browns in the contrast range. I'm using the GW contrast colors, uh, but I kind of I kind of like rotate. Sometimes I use it. It, it will depend usually on uh, whether or not I use a certain color based on what colors I used around it. You know, so again, no pun intended, but you know, when you're painting, you always want to look at your paints and see like what what's going to help the colors stand out, what's going to help the colors look interesting you know so we just want to make the colors look now the reason i'm doing the basing here is because i do i do want to like have that color as a contrast. So I can see all that color on there and see how our model is looking in conjunction with the, with the base. Now, a couple of other things we're gonna do. I wanna use this 
uh, uh, this Agrath Earthshade because I want to use it to do a little bit of grunginess on the armor, specifically like where where certain details are because it's going to give some of the gold detail and some of the other details a little bit more um, drama so I'm going to put it in there because this will give a nice contrast and emphasis uh, to those discs just on the contour of them. So it's going to create a nice, like, brown shadow. And because they're nurgly, it'll make it look a little bit more diseased and worn, which is fun. This is also really good for when you have, like, horn effects like these. What you can do is on the on like the tips of it, you can just like put a little bit of it. So this will darken those tips a tiny bit. So now when it comes out, you can concentrate that nice and and hard on the edge of it. And then you can have it come out a little bit as it goes down. But what that's going to do is make uh, a little bit of point of interest. So now you have a gradation that's moving. Because remember, we're working with like Nurgle guys. So Nurgle guys are all like... gonna do this so that it looks skull looks a little bit more on the dirty side doesn't look as pristine of a skull so this is that little touch those little touches that start to really change the way that your model is gonna start to look now we use null oil to do some washing and other stuff but Using this brown, you're going to start to see again. This is all the like little kiss uh, moments, and again, I'm going to work a little bit of that into there because that's going to give another um, dimension or level to this. So I was gonna say for um, for a Nurgle project, it's definitely worth it um, to do these little touches because it's gonna make the biggest difference. Oh, that's just gotta be that other green. Okay, let me get that other green. I mean, he's pretty much done. So we're going to be working on the big guy mostly tonight. But I knew there was just a little bit of final touches. So all I'm doing now is I'm just, I'm looking at the model and there's just a lot of and this happens quite a bit when you're uh, painting. You'll have just angles where you have like little touch up areas where you got to just go in there and like. Now, some of this I'll have to wash because I didn't just use that. I 
I didn't just use that green by itself. This, I again, this is like the MVP brush of this weekend. I, I didn't, I did something to this brush where it just like got longer. And ever since it got really long and I have that long bristle, it's been like such a great detail brush, which I wasn't even expecting. It's like really, really cool. So it's been like super great at like, just di like really just getting like my like quick detail passes uh, done, which I'm like super insanely excited about. I love how this model came out. It's, it came out so well done. All right, what was it doing? Skeleton art. But again, guys, I'd love to know what you got rocking around on your painting table. What's your current project that you're trying to finish and get done? Um, as a reminder, we do these videos every Tuesday. So if you are joining us for the first time and like what you are seeing um, and want to see more or are excited about uh, the announcement that we have the Sylvaneth models that we're going to start painting. If you are, in fact, a Sylvaneth fan, um, you know, don't hesitate to follow. Um, so again, signing up for notifications so super important. Because that will tell you wholeheartedly when we are live, when we are out and about on the world wide web of Twitch. <laughs> but yeah, please guys, let me know what you're thinking. Um, my chat window is not up like it normally is. So uh, I like to let people know that I'm not aware of my audience. We're not aware. I don't always know who is watching us. And, um, you know, I say this with love and respect, but I know that a lot of folks you know, some of our, our, some of our, uh, folks that watch us, um, are, uh, they paint while watching us. So I know they're not always first on the, on the communication bell. Uh, <laughs> but, uh, for me, when I have just my, uh, just my steam labs open i am sometimes running blind because steam labs has a nasty habit of having like i don't want to call it a delay but they just they don't always show you or tell you uh who is checking you out which i find extremely annoying but you know it's just one of those necessary evil kind of things i find it like super annoying but Or if you're not currently painting something, um, if there is an announcement from Warhammer that you think is pretty awesome and chill and cool, um, tell me more about that. You know, there was a lot of different announcements that they've made in the last little bit. Um, some really cool products and things coming down the line, um, which I know I'm looking forward to or excited about. Um, you know, for instance, like a whole new Tyranid line for the 40k universe. Um, I continue to be intrigued by the, you know, all of the, obviously the, all of the old world rhetoric. I know that I put wash on this, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna put a little bit of fun. A little bit of, uh, you know, other marks that are a little bit more gold. So it looks a little bit more uneven, like it's scuffed up kind of stuff. Yeah, it looks awesome. I'm so happy with the way that the uh, these guys are coming out. So this force, I'm going to be really happy to play. 
Now, there's a lot of different ways to do the pustule stuff. Um, obviously, if I was a little bit more skilled with, um, you know, like epoxy resin and uh, some of the other items uh, that I know a lot of other hobby folks out there use. Um, yeah, because I put the null oil, this is so cool. This is such a cool little trick. If you come back over something that you null oil, you can sort of use it to do metal highlights. It's actually a really cool way to do metal highlights. So I'm doing that just so that metal looks a little bit more scuffed and worn, because um, I think that's gonna be a really cool effect. Oh, didn't even see you back there. All right, I'm pretty solidly happy with that. Base work definitely needs some work. Oh, what am I doing? Why did I just take him off of this? I'm gonna come back to him. I'm gonna let him dry. Let's get to the big mount, the big guy. Um, Cause I'm excited to get him painted. Um, so we're gonna follow the same cues. Actually, it probably makes more sense. Let's get him in frame to have this guy out. Um, because I can use him as like a reference um, for stuff. But I was struggling with this model. This model is amazing. And I love every minute of what's going on here. It's so detailed and so crazy. What I was struggling with was how or what I was going to do. Um, uh like paint wise because i started painting stuff and he's like a, a captain unit in uh in the unit so he's got a little bit more detail than the other guys are going to have um but what i was confused about was like how i was going to divvy up his armor um i had a lot of different ideas but you know i didn't I didn't really land the plane on a lot of them. So I was like struggling on like how I was going to paint certain parts of him, what I was going to do for other things, because I want him to obviously go with the other units that I've painted, but he's like a, he's like a Lieutenant. So he should, So he kind of should have his own stuff going on. But again, when you're painting a faction or army, you want them to have that coherency. And I was going to say, like always, guys, I'd love to know what your thoughts are, what your opinions are i'm gonna try to keep this model oh that's right he's got he's got a half mask i always forget with these guys that they don't have a full they don't have a full helmet i'll show you guys what i mean when you look behind you're gonna see that it's just uh it's like a face mask but yeah i really do mean it i'd love to know from the chat um what you guys are working on what's in your painting table what's your next big project um i'm always a fan of that kind of stuff you know i always want to hear more about it i always want to hear all right so i think i'm going to do that other big this other thing is going to be the ruin lord gold and then I guess the hand gauntlets. It's so crazy because there's like, there's so much of him. He doesn't have, like, he's very armored and he has very little disease on him. 
which I always find interesting when they do models of Nurgle that like don't have all the disease on them. But for him, it's like he's got massive amounts of disease. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to do his armor with the green. And then I might overlay some of the gold on top of that for details. Just to get it based right now. And I'm like super lost. With like what I'm going to do. Um, damn it. Ah. Um, I'm very lost in what I'm going to do for the, uh, for some of the other details. I started to kind of do some of the gold and everything. There's going to be a lot of like golden details. So a lot of the symbols and stuff like that. Oh, there we go. I finally saw some of his skin. Well, he's got so much armor. They have, like, so many armor pieces. You know, I said it when we started painting him the last time. They're just... They're so super detailed. Like, they did such a nice job with the, with the Nurgle and AOS. Um, that I was, like, super... I was super impressed. I was super impressed with like the way that the with the way that they did the models and the detail. Yeah, I think besides that one spot, I think all of this I'm going to make the green. I know that's a lot of Nurgle green, but I think it kind of makes sense because I'm not, I'm not seeing a ton of like skin sapping out now as we turn the corner here. Yeah, that's all, that's all armor. So I'm going to just go for it. I'm going to go for painting all of this armor color. Damn it, that's his skin. Okay, I got it. Oh, shoot. I should have held off. I actually did see some skin in there. I didn't I said it and then I painted over it anyway. Oh, that sucks. I hate playing the game where you have to do like lots of details. Yeah, but if you it might be hard for you guys to see, but There is actually a little sliver of like Nurgle skin, which I figured there would be in between the armor plating, but it's like the most obvious right there. But I just, I didn't see it until after I ran some paint on it, so. Oh, man. Yeah, I'm going to just do the same thing. Because I want that gold to be an accent, but I don't want it to be, like, overpowering. I oh, know. Wait, that is not... No, that is not... We're going to just paint that. That's not a Nurgle. That's not Nurgle skin. If it is, I'll whiten it, but I don't think it is. I think it's just more... Oh, maybe that was Nurgle skin crap. No, that that might have been. I don't know. It's hard to tell because you don't know if it's like the armor piece or if it's a slit. 
that might be too hard to count, to tell. I might get away with that. Usually with the model, they're pretty like um, on the nose where they, excuse me, you know, they tell you. Yeah, see, for this one, I might do that in gold. But for right now, it's just easier if I base all of it in the green, and then I can just pull out. I can just pull out what, uh, what I want to, like, have uh, maybe uh, a silver color, or what I want to have, like, a certain color. And again, guys, please let us know what's on your mind and what you guys are working on or what questions you might have if you're new to Warhammer and you have never played before and you're scoping out, like, how to get started, what models do I have to kind of grab, um, just, like, the best tactics. Now, again, we're painting AOS models for Age of Sigmar Warhammer, so this is their fantasy setting for war games. Um, this is not their futuristic setting. So for a lot of people that watch our uh, content or in general might know a little bit about Games Workshop and their games. Um, it's very possible you may have heard of Warhammer uh, 40K, maybe a lot quicker than... Uh... Uh, then, you know, Age of Sigmar, its fantasy counterpart. Because honestly, if people hear that company you probably have seen because a lot of stores will will 100% carry 40k stuff um, but may not always carry as much although you know kind of a really interesting secret about people who carry um, games workshop content um, there are quite a lot of rules when you are a distributor of games workshop and uh, one of those rules is you actually have to carry and devote a certain amount of uh, your orders to Games Workshop stuff. So um, it can be a very intensive uh, proposition for a lot of stores to uh, to go the mile and actually be a Warhammer store or be a uh, Games Workshop product store because uh, it does require you to devote uh, all that space for this game. So. You know, especially when you're starting out as a game store, if you have, uh, if you are trying to build communities for players, um, you have to sort of <laughs> kind of double down on uh, their product, which, again, is something I'm not a huge fan of. Um, you know, again, I think they should do more to uh, empower. You know younger younger stores or retail stores to uh make it easier for them to carry their product you know not harder but uh games workshop can sometimes have a different attitude when it comes to um you know taking care of business in that regard But yeah, so. So we're doing some apothecary white on the fur elements. I still don't know what I want to make the bug. Um, there's a part of me that kind of wants to make them look like Tyranids. Which I thought would be kind of interesting and cool, like almost like, because again, I, I I try to do my painting schemes, um, and I've said this a couple of times. I love the idea of trying to make it look like this evolved into something in the 40k universe. Um, so I started doing my um, 
you know, my paint schemes to sort of reflect that, which I thought would be kind of cool. So uh, you, you see a lot of that progression in my stuff. Which I think is kind of fun. Man, oh man. I like feel like, I literally feel like there's just a tank of gas. Like that is half empty right now. Jesus. I, f I feel like a, a ton of bricks just fell on me. I don't know, all of a sudden. I'm having fun painting, but I'm just like, I don't know. You know, like I said, Nurgle models always have a special place in my heart because I just love the, the delicateness of them, the details that you have to paint, um, the variety of like areas and things. Um, but it is kind of true that it's like, you know, I, I know one of my viewers said it a while ago that like model painting is a marathon, uh, when you try to do it live and they're not wrong, you know, cause there's like little things about model painting that you don't realize. And like one of them is a really basic thing, but like you guys obviously are seeing me like hold this model up to paint it. Well, when you're on stream, you have to like hold, it's like keeping your everything locked in a position is like very interesting. I don't know, I kind of want to do some like zany, like buggy color, but at the same time, I don't want the bug to like take away from the guy on top of it. Yeah, I just don't know what to do. Do you guys have suggestions on what the torso of the bug should be and like all that stuff? Now, I did, I think, I did do Skeleton Horde for the wings. Okay. So I did Skeleton Horde for the wings, and I'm probably going to do um, Gilliman for the, uh, probably do Gilliman for uh, the armor pieces because I want them to be a brown. And then I got to come up with a wild zany color for the body of the, of the bug. Ah. What happens when I get overconfident? Should have washed that out. Probably gonna do a wash on top of this, so I'll do uh, so I can like shade this, but. No, don't go out of don't go out of skin. And I have a Nurgle guy in there that I gotta paint. Yeah, as we get more and more of this painted, it's gonna look so much cooler. Now, what I really should be doing, which I didn't do, is I should really be waiting until this dries properly. To avoid what I just did there, which was basically I let it drip into the other color. And because I'm using a larger brush and I'm being a little bit more frugal, you would say, with my uh, with my uh, my paint stroke. I'm uh, creating a little bit of a mess, just a tiny bit. to let this probably start to dry a little bit before I go into some of the other areas to paint it. Because it's going to start to drip in places because of gravity. And I do not want to have it get all messed up. 
so nobody's paying anything. Right? Wow. As I say, we went from having a lot of like loyal, loyal painting viewers that were all working on stuff, but maybe life is getting in the way. I mean, that happens sometimes. You know, if I didn't do my live streams, I probably wouldn't have any of my painting time. Because although I would love to say in my free time I can paint all my stuff. But the reality is I cannot. I don't have enough time to paint all of my things. Like, I, I mean, I say I don't have enough time to paint on my stuff. Obviously, the stuff I'm painting, I... I mean... Some of it, there is times where I buy, I, I, I do sometimes overbuy because we're buying for the channel or, you know, I think you guys will get a kick out of it and it's a newer model. So, you know, Let's see what we could do. Getting that brown in there. I also keep forgetting that for a lot of people that watch us, it may be your um, summer, spring break, graduation, depending on your age. Um, So I kind of get it that oh that everybody may not be completely available. Um, I know a few of our viewers also like some of their lifestyles have changed and you know you know they got different stuff going on, have to be up at different times. So like they may not be able to be with us all the time. So I get that too. But I say it all the time to people, like, please let us know you're here. Shout shout out your voice. Don't be shy. I'm always a fan when I get to meet new people. Um, I love people that find us randomly, uh, whether it was you were looking for something on Twitch or whether, you know, you may have done a search and found our videos there. Maybe you were somebody who saw our... You know, a repost of one of our videos from uh, YouTube. However you got to us, thank you for coming. Thank you for being a part of our show. And I do apologize if I seem a little downturned energy. I'm really trying to push myself to be more animated. I really have to. Um... But I don't know, this week has been like a weird week. I haven't like, I've, I've had a lot of like weird dreams and. It's been a weird, weird week. And then I don't know if you guys on the chat also have any uh, thoughts as to why maybe some of our regulars are not around or I'm praying to God that Twitch hasn't like banished me into a part of Twitch where nobody can find me. Cause I feel like we, uh, we, we tend to get more. I, I feel like lately I'm not getting as many organic views as I used to. Um, you guys are doing an amazing job with the reviews. Like everybody is coming back and watching it. Um, and finding us, which I think is really cool. Um, but uh, as I say always in these streams, like we are, um, we're so close to being affiliated. And if you guys can keep coming back and returning with us and being a part of the show, um, that would be so amazing. I mean, it takes so little to be affiliated. Um, and I don't say that because it's like, it means that our channel is not special or, 
like we did not do a good enough job to do something um i say it because you guys can get us over that hurdle so quickly just by uh being around coming to our streams um i say it all the time you know like if if you think there is a way or a person that you would like to share um in our stream please Uh, consider this is crazy so he's making a tentacle come out of his hand this is kind of gross and like in and through this guy's head or I shouldn't say he's, you know what I am completely mistaken uh, and all those people out there that are Nurgle fans if you want to lore lore shame me you can but um, that is not what he is doing um, that is uh, not at all what he is doing. So uh, in um, Age of Sigmar, the Nurgle, for folks that don't know what Nurgle are, I keep using that term. Nurgle is, they're essentially men with uh, demon aspects to them. So they worship the gods of disease and pestilence. And so... All of the units in a Nurgle army are all about creating disease. So they are all about spreading disease. They're all about creating disease. So before, when I said that he was creating a tentacle to go through this man, that is actually not what he is doing. He's actually cursing him to the point where he is actually um, infected with the aspect of disease like the like a demon full of disease so that's what he is doing he's cursing this man so that he is now uh, full of disease and mutation So he is effectively turning, you could say he's turning this man into a, uh, um, essentially a plague walker. Because that's what they do on the battlefield. They'll take your units, um, and this was, uh, this was something that was a, it's really something that was in a 40, 40k universe, but the lore is the same in the, uh, in AOS that um, when you fight them they they essentially like implant disease into the dead to resurrect them as like their units so they're like basically filling dead bodies with diseases I guess is the way to, to describe that But yeah, it's 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 very very crazy. Like all, all of their abilities have to do with like cursing or diseasing uh, the other faction, um, and that's why in AOS they could be particularly nasty to face because they um, they have a lot of tactics where you know you're just kind of like sitting there and you're just getting hit by disease counters and markers, and so. Your units are just slowly dying because, you know, they, of course, are, um, uh, you know, because they're just getting hurt by disease, which is insane. So, all right, let's see. I want to do more to that guy because I want to kind of create a certain color palette for him. So I'm going to use Apothecary White. To make his, like, 
hair a little on the light side, but I'm going to put some dirtiness to it. Also a nice color to go against that green because it'll it'll pop. Now what I'm probably gonna do is I'm probably gonna put Gilliman on his skin tone, and then I'm gonna mess that skin tone up with a bunch of other colors. So we can make it look diseased and rotten and all that kind of stuff. So what I'm going to do is I'm just putting... A little bit of skin tone in a few areas and then I'm gonna just in a few key areas and then I'm gonna come in with uh, some plague bearer green and like some of the other colors I just want to drown it out. I don't want it to be... I just want him to have a little bit of skin tone. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to mess around with... Again, all this is is just really like putting a base down because I want to make it more green and disgusting and make it look like there's definitely like some disease pustules and stuff coming through there. Oh man. So I'm using um, you know like yellow, orange all the typical like Like nurgly colors. And there's like all this disease detail, and there's gonna obviously be like. putting like disease markers so like I said I want to make them like partially starting to turn that plague bearer green So it looks like he's like mid changing, kind of mid uh, getting diseased and deteriorated. I like 
was trying to put that away in a, plot, a spot that, that definitely did not go in. It's hilarious. Um, I don't know. I'm get, lately, I've been getting very, like, anal retentive about my paints, which is a good thing because you really should have a clean environment. You should have your paints put away and not all over the place like I tend to. Um, some of it is also because what I do is, like, if I'm, if I'm using um, a certain... Uh, set of paints, I want to make it easier to find them and to know what paints I use, so I line them up over here. So now it's going to make it look like his skin is starting to turn. And get to that like plague bearer level. So it's going to also look like it's rotting a little bit. And what's cool about when you do Nurgle stuff is that I tend to, you guys have seen me tend to uh, be really careful of like the, um, the pustules and all that stuff. But you can technically like something this light, you can put it on top of it. Um, it's okay. So you don't have to be as cautious as I've been with it. Um, As I say, you guys will see, it's going to look really cool because what you're going to start to see in the model is now areas are going to start to blend. So now you can see, like, through the disease, he's starting to turn into an orgly guy. Which I thought was pretty cool. Or I thought would be a really cool way to sort of transition him, so it's like he's he's con he's being pumped with disease, which I thought would be interesting, you know, cool. That actually looks really cool. Because like we did with other characters, I like how I like that we started to tell like a story. So now when you look at it, it's got that, like, again, gr gradation of green. Which I think looks really cool. And just, you know, different, more unique. see what we got wonder if like YouTube not YouTube I wonder if um twitch is just having like technical difficulties tonight I don't know because I feel like we're we're I feel like I get this way all the time where we get like a decent
I think like all the time we get a decent amount of viewers and then I don't know we go through these like moments where uh I feel like we kind of plateau and then you guys come and you say awesome nice wonderful things to me which everyone on the channel has been super nice and I still I say it all the time I'm a really blessed lucky guy because even if I have 20 or 30 of you out of the 307 that we we have um you know that's amazing that you guys choose to spend some of your time with me and to see what we're working on and to see what we're coming up with which is pretty cool But anyway, all right. Oh, is there? Oh, actually, I might have been completely wrong. I think he is. I think the tentacle is coming out. It's coming out and down and into his mouth. I did not really see that until I looked this way. Okay, so I gotta... Oh, that's crazy. I know, I kind of switched colors. I was gonna do a little bit more with that Nurgle green because, uh, So I think this is the tentacle. Because that structure has no... Oh my god, it's so hard to see it. But... It's so hard to see. You have to, like, turn the model to a degree that's very, very hard to get in there. But it is, in fact, kind of wrapping around the guy. That's that's crazy. It's cool, but it's also crazy. <laughs> I don't know if you guys can see it, but he's got his, like, fingers in his eyes. He's actually got his, like, fingers inside of his eye sockets. Like, it looks immensely painful. Um, I mean, if, if getting, like, overcome by disease wasn't bad enough, like... I'm gonna make this dirty, probably. But I just wanted like a color that looks a little different and as a color that I'm probably not gonna use, which that's actually perfect to just put the, to have like the dirt on it or make it look like it's dirty. That actually works out really well. But I like this blue because it's it's just different. It's a different kind of color. I don't know. I, I, I tend to do like peasants. If there's like a peasant or like a no, uh, regular person on a model, I tend to do them in these like cartoony kind of like villager medieval co colors. 
is what I call it. It's like a very simplified medieval villager. That's pretty, it's pretty dope. I mean, like, I really am liking the way that these are all coming out, like, very, very cool. We're definitely getting some of the basic groundwork laid down for, like, how and what I want to have happen. I still don't know what I want the main color to be, which is crazy to me that I still don't know the answer to that. But I don't know what I want the main color to be of the bug. Part of me wants to kind of go off the deep end and do some, like, really crazy psychedelic kind of stuff but but I don't know well you guys have been definitely loyal folks but um, as always I do say this if you are watching us after the fact which I know that happens like some of some of you guys out there can't um you know, be with us when we are live on Twitch. But if you're joining or if you are watching this after we were live, um, really, if I can ask your help in, and I've said this a couple of times, if you know somebody who would really enjoy our content, um, consider sending it to them, consider uh, sharing it with them. Um, I say it all the time. The more people that come and watch us, the uh, better chance we have of hitting our targets and affiliate goals. Um, because I really, really want to become affiliated. Um, I want to take this channel to the next level. I know that you guys enjoy the content and enjoy uh, our painting and what we do. And I've gotten so many compliments of the vibe in this room and how we do things. Um, I'm really asking you guys to step up to the challenge and help. Um, some of you have already donated, which for those people that have done that, um, you know, super thank you. That's like unbelievable. Like I, I mean, I do have a slip tip. I do have a tip slash addition button, uh, up there. Um, I really only do it because, um, uh, I've said it multiple times on the channel. Like I do it because Right now, all the things that I review and I do, do come out of my own pocket. And if I could get to a point where, you know, we we had sustainable uh, revenue to the channel, um, I could really take us to the next level and grab and get lots of things that I want to work with and do um, for lots of custom projects. And I would love to be able to do those types of projects for you guys. Um, but that's where that monetary support would come in. So um, remember, and just as a reminder that if you ever hear me saying um, anything about our different um, Patreon, or if you hear me saying stuff about our streaming and Twitch and all that kind of stuff, remember that uh, I only say it because um, I plan, I want to not plan. Um, my goal is to take all the money and more, uh, let's say a moral support you guys give me, which you do give me moral support. Um, I was just say the, all the money that you, uh, you give, um, I actually, I, I, you know, the goal is to reinvest that all on the channel. Um, it's not at this point for it to sustain me and make money. Um, what I really want to do with any contribution that you guys make to the channel is, um, you know, one thing I talk about all the time is hiring other people. Um, I want to hire other people to be part of the channel. Um, and all that costs money. I want to eventually, um, introduce, uh, merch to the channel. Um, which that does cost money. Um, you know, just have like different, I think I'm going to use this. Let's see. So 
I think this would be kinda cool. Let's see. Oh, yeah. And then we could do all the pustules, like all different colors. Yeah, I like that. I like that. So we'll do this, uh, we'll do this purple, which this is Dreadful Visage. Which is actually fitting because I think that's an ability that they have. I don't know if the bugs have it, but I'm pretty sure that I'm pretty sure the Nurgle themselves have an ability like that. <laughs> or am I confusing that with grotesque appearance? I think I might be. Or don't they call it unsettling appearance, I think? I might also be confusing what I'm talking about with um with Blood Bowl, because Blood Bowl has some similar types of terms, and sometimes I, I screw it up and, and keep it all together, so. Yeah, so my goal is not to go where there are pustules, but I might hit some of the smaller ones, and then I could always go back and color them, but I think this, uh, this dreadful visage is a really good color for this. I really like that as a, as a color. And I think that'll look awesome for the wings, although I might do the wings in a more darker color. Um, now there is a lot of detail in here, so I'm not gonna go over that detail with the dreadful visage. Like I said, I may hit some some little bumps and other stuff, which I could always touch up later, but um, I don't wanna go into any recess areas or like decaying areas, because I wanna I wanna be able to uh, really work with those areas. So what do you guys think? Do you like the dreadful visage on uh, the body? I kind of think it looks fun. I think I'll do like some overlaying on top of it as well, but I think as a base color, it's a really, I think it's a really good, nice like base base color. This is a tough model because you have to get inside of some areas that are not... Ooh, that almost was really bad what I just did. I almost dropped that entire paint pot on the floor, which if you guys are not familiar with uh, contrast paints, that is one of my least favorite parts about them. Uh, and the thing that I was always annoyed with when uh, I started to use them and I had my, my fair share of studio accidents um if you if you spill a contrast paint pod um it is so the the paint is so liquid um and so fluid that what it does is it it legit it, it just pours out so you like will legit lose you know like a third to a half of your paint pod so uh, I always tell people when you're working with them to um, to make sure you get in the habit like you see me doing a lot, although there are some times where I don't do it, um, getting in the habit of closing your paint pods. I know it's annoying every time you use them to close them, but I, I would recommend it um, from my own situation. Um, so what I'm doing is here, I'm just I'm just making choices on like, you know, like I said before, there might be some smaller dots that I like just let kind of be that color. But when I get to things like those divots and such, some of them I actually don't mind it being this visage color. But where I see more advanced structures and details, I'm trying to be loose with this. Because although I could probably put some darker colors on top of it, I don't want to go too crazy and have to layer a lot of colors. So I 
but like I said, I'm probably probably gonna put washes on top of this as well. But I do like it as a base tone. And then we could always add to it or layer on top of it, which I think would be kind of cool. And it's one of the newer contrast colors, Dreadful Pur uh, Dreadful Visage. All right, 120. All right, so probably, not going to lie, guys, we're probably going to call it quits in a minute. Um, just because I do have to... Um, not be up super early, but I can't super stay up crazy, crazy, crazy time. Actually, let me get the dreadful message. Let me. Yeah, there's so much detail on this. You got bugs, you got little details. Everywhere you turn with this model, like there's just so much going on. But yeah, I'd love to hear what you guys think. And like, um, going back to our viewership, um, you know, I don't ask you, well, I, I have asked in the past this, but if there is like a better time or if you think there's a better day that we should be doing our content, um, I'd love, love, love to know more. Um, you know, if you are, if you are in fact finding that it may be, you know, you'd like to be here for a live stream, but you can't um, because the timing is just not working out. Um, I, you know, I don't have a lot of time that I can plug in my streams because I do do them at certain times for a reason. Um, but, you know, if the whole, if you guys as an audience, like, let me know that, like, even starting them a little bit earlier or you know, something would, would make you able to attend them more. I'd love to hear in the comments. Um, you know, I definitely want, like I said, to innovate our content. Um, and part of the way I, again, the only way I'm going to be able to ever do that is if, um, you know, we can see you guys here consistently and we get to that affiliation marker you know, um, that's really the unlock is getting to the point where um, we are being publicized on Twitch at a, at a larger rate, you know. And that's where you guys can 100% help us with that. And I know we could do it and I know people out there. Because we have had so many amazing moments of just large groups coming and seeing us and creators coming and seeing us and just all this great stuff and imagine if we were affiliated how much more we could do and we and that all happened not even being affiliated you know that's what i love about it You know, like we, we, we don't have many, we don't have a ton of claims to fame, but, um, you know, the fact that I've had, um, many, you know, many like somewhat professional, um, gaming companies come and check out our stream, uh, YouTubers or content creators who have been gracious enough. To take the time to stop by um it's it's pretty insane i'm not gonna i'm not gonna lie
But I always say to myself, if I was able to do some of these little things, you know, if I was able to do some of these things without being affiliated, imagine if we become affiliated. Oh my God, the stuff I could pull off. And there are so many like amazing projects in the future that I want to do. And, um, you know, all right. Well, I think we got a good chunk of stuff done on this big boy. This guy we finished. Um, I think he looks amazing. I love my AOS Nurgle guys. I think they're coming out great. I love the way this Nurgle army is starting to shape up. Um, just, just looking all nice and Nurgly, ready to ready to fight, ready to party. Um, I'm liking it a lot. But uh, if you guys want to see more of this, if you want to see us complete these amazing models and these amazing Nurgle guys. Um, consider following the channel, consider signing up for notifications. Um, you can check out my website, my Patreon, and my tips and explanation button for some monetary support. And as always, we do live shows, and I always like to remind people, Monday is Marvel Crisis Protocol Night and indie, and other indie models. Um, Tuesday is AOS. Wednesdays is really our art show, um, but now we're switching and switching gears with that show to be all asset creating and using um, digital art to create assets for D&D &D and other uh, tabletop games. So we're gonna start doing, we're gonna be working on play mats tomorrow. So it's gonna be pretty cool. We're gonna finish up um, the Lorcana inspired play mats that we're doing. Um, and eventually I'm hoping to do some custom play mats to be merch that we're gonna sell. Um, so please check that out. Um, and Thursdays is of course, our 40k night and then we uh, and then weekends i may do some additional content we're not completely booking that yet um but i may do some additional things like warhammer total war three some other amazing titles uh you guys can check us out those days it's scheduled and up there but please consider following us and signing up for notifications we'll see you guys at the next video take care everybody